I'm sipping, 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 I'm sipping
I can't say for sure that I could co-sign everything they've ever said, but oh, and this is, but will. also the reason I wouldn't even do that is because they still figuring it the fuck out. Exactly. So to know that is to know that you should be a little nervous about it too. Yeah, it's and, and that's the thing. Time. What was the point in the person telling you that it didn't exist? That they're gonna live their life? I don't know. I think I was just saying how I was still being precautious, like I wasn't jumping out the gate. And they were saying they're not. Out. And she was like, "Well, you know." I'm this this it's just not even real anyway. I was just like oh. You know how many people have spoken publicly against it or said or done dumb shit that wind up getting smacked with it? It's like karma. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm leaving them words alone. Listen, I like I said, like I believe in whatever you times. Corey, whoever the fuck it is that's flying around taking any motherfucker, I believe in it. Right, right. I believe any more than a lot of shit y'all told me to believe in and you motherfuckers believe in. Let's be for real. Yo, okay. let's be for real. So like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and that's the thing, man. You want to teach people, but a lot of times, at times like COVID or times like 2020, with what we're talking about between the races, the people that you're trying to teach are people that just don't want to know. Yeah. Because you should know. Yeah. Like I shouldn't be having a teacher. You got all the resources to find out. You can find out the same fucking way I find out. I swear, if I want to find out what the white folks is talking about, my YouTube searches change. Mm -hmm. My news broadcasts, I look at different exactly. joints. Exactly, exactly. I read different articles. Are you know you, what I'm saying? Like they put they shit out there too. I was so getting <laughs> let me ask you this. Are you so I guess like you said, um, we were saying, you know, we started with our um awareness, our struggle, our rioting, our protesting. For the you know the current events, are you surprised at the magnitude or the number of the opposing or the opposition? Like how many people are coming forth from that angle? No, I'm surprised from the motherfucking supporters. I'm still amazed and appreciative of the numbers of motherfuckers on our side. Right. So if I'm still amazed at the numbers of people on our side, I can't be surprised at the people on the other side because I expected another twenty percent to still be over there. Yeah, at least I just been seeing some real like. Some real hatred like well i mean i'm surprised that the the boldness of it but i also i'm not surprised at the same time because it's like they're saying things that are blatantly tone deaf blatantly wrong side of history type of things to say but in their community that's what rallies the troops mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying the military has certain words that they say they got some right. words that they say too And we are aware of a few of them We just right. learned of some new ones a couple weeks a fucking go Right, 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 right. You know what I mean what was it? I ain't I ain't do nothing Ain't do nothing is a racist slur mm -hmm. Like we we ain't know about that shit mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying And the crazy thing is that all, we, all they've been proven is that we ain't do nothing, nothing. Right But whatever So um, like when it comes to that kind of shit None of that surprises me Because it's like You have to be ignorant To even believe 95% of that shit That they're spewing That they're trying to protect That they're trying to save That they're trying to promote mm -hmm. In the first place So why would I be surprised That you're being ignorant now Right And then Even the ones that are intelligent Are smart enough to know That their base is ignorant mm -hmm. And that this is what they want to hear There's politics across the board It's all gang shit anyway Yeah I've <clears> just <throat> been a little bit I mean it's just been so many things Like I, I can say that Um I can't say I'm surprised. I'm just definitely disheartened by, um, you know, knowing that it still exists and as prevalent as it does. But in addition to that, um, I think I text you all the time. I, I kind of stopped texting you. Not that I've been desensitized. I'm just tired of texting or sharing, um, which you got to continue to share. But um, a lot of the men that have been murdered by, like every day, you see another video of somebody else that was murdered by the hands of police, and it's ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. that was swept under the rug, and it might not have been yesterday. It might have been six months ago, or it might have been last year, but Two years it's ago. countless. Mm -hmm. It's countless times, and so I just, like, that's another reason why I'm just, I'm just so wayward. I'm just like, um, I just know what, I don't know really what emotion to have right now, because every moment it transpires something different for me. Well, that's the double-edged sword of having footage, right? It comes down to we don't get any justice, if, any justice if nobody sees it. But at the same time, what does it do to the mental, the mentality of black people, for one, and others in this country? Because you're constantly seeing black men surrendering at the hands and get murdered live on like it, it does something it's like the jesus complex the mm -hmm. white jesus complex i should call it you know what i mean it's like it, it does something to people's mentality mm -hmm. even it, it ups one side and it fucks or up morale on another side or it builds 
you know, the lava start to bubbling on this, the other side and it's going to explode. But either way, it's really like, I mean, we don't have to click on it. And I ain't going to lie with the George Floyd joint. I seen clips, screenshots, all type of, I've never watched that whole video because mm-hmm. I know I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. A lot of the videos I haven't watched um, intentionally because I've seen it enough. I know what it is. I knew it existed before you motherfuckers ever seen videos of it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like I said before, I lost a friend of mine directly to some shit that I know was some fuckery from the police officer that killed him. So it was like none of that was new to me. So to keep watching it does do something to me. To keep hearing about it still does something to me. Mm -hmm. But I also know that, like we keep mentioning the youth, the shift is coming. I just watched Combat Jack's son say he's running for city council because something woke up in him during the protest. And he's 22 years old, very well-spoken young man. He had went to school far in Orange County for college because he wanted to get far away. He's from New York mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and he said, you know, when his dad died, he had to come home. And then, what's this? Um, his dad died in 2017. Mm-hmm. So subsequently, he was still home working and all of that. And now he's in this position where he's trying to run for city council. And it's just like, they just take this shit different. Mm. Like, he never thought about being in politics. He never thought he had a voice. He didn't recognize his voice is what he said. He said when he first got out, they didn't know what to do. He was ill-prepared. He got maced and all of that shit. You know what I mean? Pepper sprayed and everything. He was like, but he went out there every day, and then he started to find his voice, and then people started to follow his voice. Right. And that's powerful. So it's interesting. I feel like um, the youth today have a lot more um, resources and tools than um, any other generation before. So Absolutely. I think that that's definitely an advantage for them. I think that's definitely. The internet and social media is a resource that's phenomenal in times like this. Right. Which is part of the reason that, and a lot of times you hear me speak on social media on this podcast out of frustration, is because it's like, yo, you know, we could be using this for some cooler shit. Right. You know, the monkey see monkeys do shit don't really get us nowhere, but we could actually learn from each other, share shit, progress, help other motherfuckers mm-hmm. out. So speaking of, like, like I was saying, based on the back and the sweat and the tears that you know, you know those before before us, us went through went through. That makes it. That's why it's so easy. Not only did, I wasn't even necessarily just speaking to the internet. I was just speaking into the diversity and inclusion that even exists today that didn't exist. Well, yeah, this moment doesn't happen without ago. a civil rights movement, right? You know what I mean? At all. But like we were, we're supposed to stand on the shoulders of the generations before us, mm-hmm. and that's why even though we've been crediting the kids and all of that so much for what happened and for being the um, forefront of it. I've also seen people trying to say, well, the other generation or this is the first generation that. And it's like, nope, don't discredit what they did because right. they did what they did from a position you can't imagine. Right. And that was some shit that was unfathomable to do when they did it. Mm-hmm. And they did it and they held it down and they did a lot. Mm-hmm. So much so that there's so much civil rights history to lead to. It's not just one walking across a bridge. It's not just one person that sat on a bus. There's hundreds and thousands of stories that we know of, of things that was done during that time period that you had to be strong to do. When a Montgomery bus boycott happened, motherfuckers was walking five to ten miles to right. and from mm-hmm. work. Yep. Working 12 to 18 hours. Motherfuckers act like everybody just had a car to carpool. Right. People was walking through their shoes right. to support the cause. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to tell me you walking from the art museum to City Hall is the same as that. Right. <laughs> like, you can't tell me that. I'm not going for it. Mm-hmm. That's like saying, well, if I was a slave, motherfucker, somebody in your gene pool was a slave. Mm-hmm. And they had the same heart you had. They might have got killed. But y'all ain't running around telling stories about their prestige from fucking bouncing. Right. So don't disrespect. We're never going to disrespect the motherfuckers that got us here. Mm -hmm. We're here for a motherfucking reason. It took a long while because it was intentional. That's what systematic racism is. That's why racism is systematic. That's why we can't be fucking racist because we don't control shit. But, like, at the end of the day, I'm never going to not acknowledge the fact that what you were making a point of before I went on my tangent, pardon me, about, like, no, this shit comes from a long line of people that's done a lot of shit in between, before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. Because even now, there's new things that are starting, new programs, new initiatives that are starting right now at a ground level 
that are getting more energy than it would have gotten last year. Right. So something I just I just wonder. I didn't even think about this until just now. I wonder the impact that COVID nineteen had on the Black Lives Matter movement, or you know, just our march and protest and struggle for equality. From what angle? So from multiple angles. So I'm thinking of. Um, I think it may have even magnified it because everyone had to sit home. Everyone had to sit home and kind of watch it. You couldn't miss George Floyd because right? you was in the house and it was on every station and on every page. So I think that was one way. But I also feel like, but what was interesting is that people still rose to the occasion and didn't let um, this minuscule and size virus impact their right to protest and right. to do what they got to do. I mean, there's, other, there's another way to look at it too. There's a way that like nobody had to go to work, everybody was off, everybody was frustrated was, was and all of that. Too. And then there's also how many people didn't go because they feared COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, was a part of a march that a young lady came out there and I wish I could remember her name and the organization, but she had protest kits for everybody. Storage bags, storage bags full of everything, goggles, whatever you could think of, granola bar, water, anything you would need. She had packs for everybody, but she said her family and her husband, a boyfriend, whatever have you, was begging her not to go out there because of COVID. So she stood out there before we left, handed out everything, and she wished us well and bounced. And she had to make that decision for her family. Mm -hmm. But she gave it. I still got the pack in there. I could show it to you. Right. But it was like, you know, she still contributed. And we need people to contribute in different ways. Because there was another guy out there that had a lot of supplies and plenty for everybody. Anything from cans to bang on, markers, extra boards, um, bandanas for your face. Like, he had everything. And it's like, he still didn't have exactly what she had. Right. So we needed all it. But every event that I went to so far, I've been to a couple... There was somebody at every single event passing out granola, granola bars, bars water. water. You know what I mean? The, at least, the, at least the bare necessities and essentials, uh, in addition to poster boards, markers, masks. People, a lot of people had masks, so that's what I was kind of getting to. Also, that's another point in um, regards to COVID nineteen not being able to um, hinder our protests and our rallies because all right, well, we gotta have masks. Some people didn't have one, but a lot of people pr pr uh, was able to. To give well, out masks for the for the mask. masks masks for the masks. Word. <laughs> it's easy. F it's easier for me personally because I don't want to speak for the people. Easier for me personally to digest dying because I was fighting for something by a virus than to just keep watching people die mm -hmm. for ten dollars worth of product. We're talking about Lucy's, a ten dollar counterfeit. Falling asleep. CDs. Like, we ain't talking about no money. Falling asleep, though. Like, yeah. that ain't even a product. We're not talking I about just... crimes for real. Like, we talking about bullshit that is put in place to protect some shit that none of us even give a fuck about. Right. The fact that you can't sell CDs is based on a law that's built by who to protect, who to make money off of what, exactly. that who makes. The, the thing about the cigarettes, where Same the fuck thing. do that shit go? Mm -hmm. The shit about, like, really think about it. Counterfeit bills. Who the fuck is affected by that for real? Like, that's not shit we care about that much. And the world shouldn't care about that more than a life. So if I went out there and I got sick, hopefully I survived it. But I also knew that my heart was in the right place. My feet was walking in the right direction. And you can't keep asking God for stuff that you won't put your own body behind. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it don't make sense to keep praying for change, praying for enlightenment, praying to have a better outlook. Well, if these things change, I might wake up and feel better every day of my life than I have previously. Mm -hmm. And that's worth fighting for. Now, I know I'm not really in a position where I'm built for that first couple of days when the cops was acting a fucking donkey. You know what I mean? I know I wasn't built for that, so I didn't go out there. But I also have platforms where I've been doing what I can this whole time on my level, and I also went out there. And not with, the, not with the understanding that it wouldn't happen again, but with the understanding that, you know what, I can't keep sitting in the house. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to stay the fuck out of jail, which is really my point mm -hmm. about why I didn't want to go in the first place. Right. And I don't want to think back and be like, nigga, you've been in jail for less. So I participate. But COVID don't stop that for me.
Right. And I'm scared to death of COVID. I ain't flew yet. I missed three trips in three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I missed a couple trips too. I ain't playing one yet. So something else that was interesting, <laughs> I stopped past my mom's yesterday, and my mom is, you know, where my mom lives. So it was a Rite Aid on one corner and a Walgreens on the other corner, and both of them were affected by the riots and and have been closed since then. But I'm like, so I guess they're in no rush to, I guess, open back up because it's been like over a month now. Um, you would think, I, I thought that. They might be up and running by now. Shoprite, you, you, Shoprite, who had a massive store, who had to me, I would think a greater loss, was up and running in less than a week. Who got looted a bird for eighteen hours? Exactly. <laughs> so it was just interesting for me to see. Um, and then I thought about the impact, like the neighbors, the neighborhood can't get their medicine. Well, or my mom had to go to a market that's blo- like almost two miles away for a piece, a loaf of bread that she could have got from a hundred feet from away next door to her house. You know um, I mean? A lot of, as far as medicine, medicine goes. A lot of the pharmacies have set up spaces and places, and we can get that information if you need it. Yeah. Um, to which it's not convenient, but, but it's still not the hundred feet it's away. Not, that it's not. It's not. It's not convenient at all. But I mean, midnight. just not you saying. I mean? Not saying it as a. Not saying it as a um good thing, but as a solution maybe to. Sure, absolutely. Because even if like you know me, if I gotta go get the shit, I go get, or take right. it to get the shit. That's right. And the point of me saying it is, I just wonder um, what is the perspective of that? Is it they're not rushing to it? They think we're not No, that's over, exactly what it is. No, the insurance been kicked in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I told you how long ago that I heard about what Lowe's did and how quick they got right. they, they got the yeah. same shit back. This same shit with ShopRite. Yeah. We're talking about the same thing. Right exactly. Aid and Walgreens ain't exempt. They're not no different. They have the same type of advisors. It's the same thing. Exactly. So, like, you talking about. Not rushing, not giving a fuck. I mean, it's just like why it takes so long to get the streets fixed. If that shit was three blocks behind where your mom live at, mm-hmm. it'd have been back open. Maybe four blocks. But you know what I'm talking about. You know the direction I'm talking yep. about. It'd have been back open yep. already. So, um, vote locally. <laughs> Absolutely, vote. Vote often. Fuck it. Um, raise hell when it makes sense. Cause you got the right to, mm-hmm. and we have people that are suffering that they got a they got a foot in the game and a hand in the game, but they done did they shit, they done played their part, so they need to be taken care of, and we need to make sure that whatever makes the most sense is spoken to us and written about and emailed about, and if y'all tag people, tag these motherfuckers, man, for real, and we talking about West Philly, right, right, um, but speaking to this, so we spoke about um. When I saw you the other day, the Farrakhan speech, and that was something I thought was, that I, I like when people call you out. If people, they probably know what they're doing, but I think they're a little bit more accountable or, or held to accountability if you, if you call their names out mm. um, for things that they're doing. So I was like, where are you going to with this speech? No, when you <laughs> said calling them out, and then you said, I think um, what they're doing, I didn't know where that was going. Yeah, yeah I saw your face like, mm. I'm with you. Nah, we but rolling. Just, that was something I appreciated from that conversation and from that speech. I appreciated the whole speech, but specifically, um, and I think when you get into the local um, topic we're talking about, calling people out and letting them know, um, you know, their responsibility um, in this all. So a lot of people, they have responsibilities. We have our local I election. I said what you did there, little Lisa. Go ahead. <laughs> we have our local elections. We have not only that, we have um, our... There are people in our communities. There are people who are involved in our community that are not necessarily in government. So we need to just make sure that we all communicate um, and are on the same page to get where we're not. Support Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas is my folks, folks. Support Isaiah. Yes. Make sure y'all take care of Zeke, man. Yes, that's definitely my folks, folks, folks. Um, is on the ground and is always in the community with your children way before he was in politics. I was about to say that. I was about to so say that. Like, it's interesting how... Um, his involvement in like sports and in education was able to transform into local government. And I can see him going way further and beyond. Um, but he's definitely has, he's someone who has um, our community's best interest at heart and has always that I know of, known of um, pushed forward to that. So definitely support Isaiah Thomas. You can definitely look at his platform. He's somebody that has our best interest at heart. So. I recently just watched, I believe it was a Jesus and Merrill interview. They was interviewing a politician from New York that was a former principal. And they were asking how did his own um, skill set from being a principal lend itself to his new position. And when he broke it down, he ended it with, so I think more people in education should look into politics because they already built for it. Exactly. Like, it's kind of crazy how many similarities it is to what he had to do as a principal and to what we need in these um, uh-huh. in these communities. Right. 
you know what I mean? So it's funny that you said that because mm-hmm. I literally probably a couple of days it was Sunday night. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's really dope. That's really interesting. Um that's a, I I think that's a kind of cool I never even thought about how um educators would be um significant and have the impact they could you the in link. politics. I see you. The yeah, link. but I but I see it though. Yeah, I know you already got some ideas, but I see you the link because it's interesting just to hear how excited he was to like say it. Like he he's confident in the fact that he knows that his skill. Just like AOC being a former waitress, bartender, what um she had a couple other jobs. Like her personality lends itself to dealing with the people and knowing mm-hmm. what the people's problems are, and being able to get it out of them. Right. You see what I'm saying? And it's like. We need more regular people in politics. I don't think you should be allowed to be a lifelong politician. I think you should be a dentist, then you do your thing, and then you serve your time, and you go back to being a fucking dentist. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it works better that way, because I feel like the more you stay in politics, the more people you owe, the higher up that you go, and the less that you can really accomplish, that's an agenda that's for the people. Right, right, right. You see what I'm saying? You ain't doing shit if you owe the NRA. About th- gun violence, I think that also, <laughs> I think that also lends to the conversation of um, I guess changing like our police systems, right? I think that like our communities have kind of um, lost respect, or even more than respect, they don't even think that the that, that the police will protect them or even just do what their due diligence or their duties are, right? So I think with bringing the police, like you said, with elect uh, with politicians. Being in the community, I think if the police are, and I know people say this all the time, but if the police are really more in our communities, like they might, they think, they're talking about changing the law where the police have to live in the city now. What do you think about that? I think that it's necessary. I think the reason that they stopped giving police incentives to live in the communities is so that they so can't they lost run touch. It. I feel like they lost no, touch with I the community like they when they left. Intentionally so that they could turn back into the clan. Like, they wanted to bring mm. outsiders in. They wow. knew that Because they knew, if we know the numbers were more productive when you had someone walking around the neighborhood that knew the neighborhood, communicated with the neighborhood, was at basketball games right. and things, when it wasn't about being there in force. Right. Like, it's like someone said, um, the problem with police in our communities and the people is that we all see each other only at the worst times. Mm-hmm. The officer sees you at one of the worst times in your life right. when he's called. Right. You see him in one of the worst positions you can see him in when he's called to you because of how he's reacting to what you're going through at one of the worst times in your life. Right. So the trauma of that, the mentality of that, the interaction of that, the frustration of that turns into some shit. And it's like what you were saying earlier, like people are starting to feel like, when has the police ever been on our side? Right. In our community. In our community. In our community. Police reports are for insurance purposes. Because how often do they find your shit? How often do they find that person? How often do you literally get justice at the hands of the police without a snitch? Yo, you know what? I was so I was so young and naive. When I was young, a few different residences got broken into, right? And you know, like you said, well, in my mind, I'm thinking the TV. In the TV, you see the little, they, they house get robbed, family matters, whatever show it is, Martin, whatever. They get Police robbed, show right? up. They Police show up. They they had concern, but at the end of the day, they pinpoint who it was and they find your shit, right? So every time my shit got stolen, I just knew that somebody was gonna come and save the day and give me my bike back. You know what I'm saying? Give me my TV back. You know I got my bike back. We spread out around the neighborhood and found that motherfucker. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, it wasn't no police. You know my grandma wasn't doing it. They still live from grandma house. You it know, wasn't she no wasn't police, man. But, um, no, so it's just interesting you say that because it never, ever happened that way. You're right. It's definitely for It's never that. Purposes. It's literally just for insurance purposes. It's so that when you got to get some new shit or when you whatever have you, you're not at fault or you're not taking another loss. But at the end of the day, you never look at it like they going to get my shit back. Right. They going to find the person that killed my son. They going to, like, never. You Mm -mm. never look at it like that. Mm -mm. And then even when they come to your crib, supposedly to help, you don't even want to let them inside Mm because you don't know their intentions when they get inside your house. You talking to motherfuckers that's looking all around your shit. Right. Like, can we have a conversation? Mm -hmm. Can you act concerned about my loss, whether that's monetary or physically I lost someone without you trying to worry about what the fuck else I got going on in in my my house? house? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, so when have they ever been on our side? Like, you you come from capturing slaves. That's why they were created, to capture runaway slaves. 
Then you get to a point where it's still a blue wall, a gang of motherfuckers that say, yo, we get to kill niggas out of frustration and nobody gets to say nothing. Right. And even if they say something, the union's going to get us the fuck out of it. You still going to get a pension and nobody gets to sue you. That's crazy. And if you wait two years, you can go two counties over and be a police again. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. That's the best job in the world. But you know what's interesting too? To a racist. Yeah, but I'm seeing, <laughs> lot, but I'm seeing a lot of them break that code of blue. That I'm really seeing a lot, like the, the whole. They telling on each other now. They they telling on each other now. Like, Ooh, they telling on each I'm other. I'm excited. Besides besides uh, the one in Georgia that just recently happened, but what I was just speaking to also when I was saying day after day, you keep seeing these case after case. But I just saw one earlier today. I don't remember where it Talk was. Talk to me, so gorgeous. Many. Let me know. No, but the 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 partner of the guy who committed the uh, murder, murder um, went and you know on the record and you know testified against him. So or he's going to testify him against him. So mm. I think I know it happened six months ago. This was just on the news today. Mm. So no, that's deep. And um, I mean, but you've never seen that before because you know it's always the the, the the wall of blue, right? But see, the blue wall falls down the same way that that mob shit falls apart. When you make an example out of a motherfucker, when you have mandatory minimums, when you take certain rules off of the books that help motherfuckers escape from under this shit, the motherfuckers is going to tell on each other. Mm -hmm. If there was a time when we could have killed somebody, I could have watched you kill somebody and we would have just got a motherfucking uh, write up that would have disappeared and nobody would have ever seen it again, then that's a go. But once they start talking about, yo, he's getting charged with first degree murder, he's getting charged with second degree murder, he's getting charged with 12 different charges, one of them being murder, you don't want to be on that list. And you definitely don't want to go to jail as a police that killed the nigga. Right. That's the last thing you want to do. Ain't enough Aryans yeah, in there. Yeah, then they giving them special treatment and they giving them whole floors to themselves. And Well, I mean, you control that as long as they give a fuck about you. Once you lose... Don't nobody yeah. give a fuck about you. It's like being a politician. Once you get caught up, all them doors close. Mm -hmm. They don't care who you got that you can give up. You ain't Epstein. Mm -hmm. Can't wiggle out of nothing. Yo. Like, this is facts. You see what I'm saying? And, that, and that's what it comes down to. It's like, at the end of the day, you fucked up. They got you. My bad. Mm -hmm. And that's how they going to treat you. Now, you might have people that know some people that, because we all know how prison works. People know people, and you might get some form of protection. Right. But, like, if they can file civil suits against you, how do you pay for that? <clears throat> Shit changes when you make examples out of motherfuckers. Right. That's why that blue wall is going to come down if... They stick to the script of what we're talking about, bringing in special prosecution, special investigators, making sure that the, um, like I said, the unions can't interfere to the point of doing some bullshit that just doesn't hold this person accountable at all. Mm -hmm. Like, when those things start happening, yeah, more people start talking. If fucking mob told on each other, right? some of the gangsters, you know, told on motherfuckers, you think these police ain't going to tell? They don't even have the same snitching rule. Their shit come from something different. different right. It ain't even from. It come from. It's it's like the CIA. Like, I got some shit on you. You got some shit on me. As long as we good, we good. Once that don't matter no more. Oh, it's fuck you for this 50,000 a year. Right. If it's <laughs> fuck nigga, fuck then you. you know it's fuck you. <laughs> you know it's fuck me. Right. It gotta be. Right. Because ain't nobody that solid. Y'all don't like the people. See, the reason that. Our community looks at snitching the way it does is because how you become in cohorts and cahoots with somebody that you even do the dirt with in the first place. When you become a police, that's like joining a frat. They just put you in the same color as a bunch of other motherfuckers and them your brothers. Right. That's way different. He ain't never risked his freedom or his life for me in our past. You don't even know him. He wasn't there when they tried to roll on me at the playground. Mm -hmm. He wasn't there when I was dead broke and bought me something off the ice cream truck. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of that exists. This is just a motherfucker that got a number that is in cohesion with the number that's in my district mm -hmm. that ain't retired. Mm -hmm. That's all they are to each other, for real, if they can't protect each other. Well, I think it's going to, to an extent, now, that is something I think is going to take a lot of time to um, to destructure or restructure in any kind of way. Piece by piece. But I do think that it's at the very 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 beginning stages of it absolutely i mean 
we're still at a point where we have to explain what defunding police means to a majority of the country. And it's crazy because it's similar to the Kaepernick thing. When we're putting out examples of exactly the options that go along with defunding the police and people are saying, oh, you just want to shut down all the police stations. And that's not what defunding the police means. Right. Defunding the police doesn't mean bankrupting the police. Yeah. It means taking some of this bread that's being spent from taxpayers, from motherfuckers that's not doing their jobs properly, that could probably use help from other entities that we could or pay for. Or jobs that don't, are, aren't real jobs. They're just actual line items because those exist. Yeah, exactly. So it's like this it's is reallocated to yeah. funding that is more useful for our community for our community and um if you believe that through the police department if you believe yeah. your community gets better having more police as opposed to more opportunity then use a motherfucking fool right you're a fucking fool right especially when you know that the police departments are corrupt and we live in one of them cities so you're not going like we're not doing that and i'm what so my question right it's kind of like the you know the question like do all men cheat right I feel like, are all police departments corrupt? I feel like it's like the good cop, bad cop question. All cops aren't bad. All right, so which cops are on our side? Which cops have spoken up? Which cops have resigned for the right reasons? Which cops are holding motherfuckers accountable? Because you're not a good cop just because people keep saying there's good cops. You have to be a good cop through action. I don't believe that there's a lot of cops that have seen things unjust and spoken the fuck up. I'm just sitting here really wondering if there's like a police district somewhere that is purely non corrupt. Uh, I think that's possible by 2020. It's possible. I don't know where it is, but if anybody knows, leave it in the comments. Right. But um, it's possible. That's what I was saying. It's kind of like, you know, how they say, oh, men cheat. So I'm like, all police departments are corrupt. I'm trying to figure out which ones aren't. I mean, but the thing is, in order to see, this is the time we find out. Mm hmm. Because not that there are good cops in in corrupt systems and corrupt places. I'm not saying all cops are bad. We know that. Or oh, well, I'm but not it's bailing system. nobody out. Like but I it's said, a system. But it's a system. Bail your fucking self out, yo. Like, in order to not be a problem in my community, I'm not a problem in my community, and right. I try to change things in my community. Right. Because if you're not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem, right? Exactly. So I need I need more than just he ain't kill nobody yet. Right. I need more than that. Like I said, I've grown, grown up a block away from a cop that argued me down on Facebook about something around the Trayvon time. A fuck around was the Trayvon situation and police responses and shit like that. And it was just like, bro, you grew up right by, you know what I know. Right. So I started feeling like they was brainwashed. Mm. And I have police officers in my family. And I ain't going to lie, a couple of them real niggas. But at the same time, as I don't think they would participate, I also don't know if they will run tell that neither. Right. And I can't vouch for what the fuck they do on their side. I know they ain't out here killing niggas. Right. Like, I know that's not happening. Right. Uh, right. But, like, all of this shit, and that's what, like, that's what makes all of this shit unnerving. That's what makes it scary. But that's why, now that they know we watching, now that they know the tide is shifting, we just going to have to bunker down, protect ours. And see how this goes And if it's time to rise up again We're going to have to do it again Yeah Like this shit might be like COVID It might die down a little bit And then we got to pop back out on the ass Right Because at the end of the day That's why I said they ain't We still hearing speeches windows. about protecting statues Y'all protecting statues Y'all not protecting people Yeah That don't make no sense Not at all With rifles and all types of arms that if if you and I would have been out there with that, you already know it would have been a whole problem. If you know how I know what's going on in this city right now between the communities and the police departments and all of this funny shit that's been going on with the races since these um, protests have started. Oh, it's a circus. Yeah. Certified zoo. Like, I mean, like, hilarious. Yeah. When you really look at, like, people that's supposed to be in a position to affect change, do things, or control, or... Um, progress whatever whatever their job description is because I don't want to give out titles because that's right. that's saying too much. Right, right, right. But like they're in them positions to know and to do, and they fucking fifteen years old when it comes to the issues, when it comes to handling them, when it comes right. to figuring out policies and changes and even how to address the public. Mm-hmm. They're children. It's like, and I don't know. Um, 
maybe you can relate to this. I came up playing ball. I knew a lot of dudes that was the man in the streets or was big as shit or was the man in football and was big as shit. And when they put on a pair of basketball shorts and the basketball sneaks and they get on the court, they look like little boys. Right, right, right. right. Because they lost. That's not their world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, it's not always about how big, strong, powerful you are. It's when you get in certain realms, exactly. you can still look like a toddler to a yep. motherfucker that know what's going on. And that's why knowledge is power. And that's why people that are really woke in our society that, that know the real history, that go for mores and back and forth and all of that. Mm-hmm. That's why they act and talk the way that they do. Because you look like a child mentally to them. Right. If you don't understand a portion of what they understand, because they know that they went hard to get where they at. Mm-hmm. But if you don't understand it at all, then you like a fool to this person. Mm-hmm. That's how it feels to look at somebody that you've seen as like a gorilla somewhere right. else. And they put on them sneaks and you like, oh, my God. <laughs> so Nick, 30. So the way I look at that, I didn't play ball, but I look at that as a person that you saw from afar that you had a certain perspective of. And when you mm-hmm. got to meet them, you like, this person is... But it's different because not the same thing that I thought they were. <laughs> because the person is still that person in that round. Like right. say for instance you saw somebody that was fly as shit, fashion wise, always had their shit on point, was above the trends on um hair, nails, makeup, whatever have you. Cool. But then when you get her in a boardroom, she looked like she looking for either the nearest exit or the nearest leg. Right, to home. that's what I'm saying. She's not any different than that person that you thought she was. Right. She's just not well versed. Right, okay, I got you. So her post are going to look different. Her lifestyle is going to look different. Her right, conversation right. is going to be different because she's going to stick to where she's comfortable at. But once right. somebody comes around and y'all at that luncheon and that conversation shift, all that fashion, all that sitting up proper shit going to turn into... And you're going to be like, who is this sloppy bitch? Right, 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 right. And I, I'm dead serious. It's the same. That's, I've that's, seen it. Yeah. That's, that's how it go. And I was about to say, I know you've seen it before. <laughs> I know you've seen it before. Like, mm-hmm. we know a lot of people, and it's easy. It's very easy to put yourself up. And I, I always believe in being confident. But I also believe in, like you say, awareness, knowing it's half the battle, right? Mm-hmm. It's always easy for people to put themselves on a pedestal when they're surrounded by things that they're comfortable with. Right. Always, you put people in a certain are you ring, out of sight of your comfort room. zone, man. Mm-hmm. And it changes. No matter how much they want to be there, they get there and realize I don't know how to be here. Mm. Or if they don't realize it, they do a bunch of shit that shows that they don't, they don't know, know how, how to be, be there. there. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So it's one of them things. Like, and it's just it's funny because that's how I feel. A lot of this has been going since the tide has shifted. It's like. These people that's been in these powerful positions never thought that they would have to deal with these things that they're not educated on, didn't care about, Mm -hmm. didn't give a fuck about. And now they're forced to make statements and do things where you have a media and a public that's well versed on them. That's Mm -hmm. picking you the fuck apart. Right. Right. They just getting off numbers and sound bites every time you say something, (laughs) which is your job to protect. Yeah. Yeah. Which you've done when you knew everything. We used to talk about the stock market, you was good. Right, 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 right. Talk about black folk, you don't know what the fuck to you say out right, your right, mouth. Right, right. So it's the first time you ever had to visit this and you're 65 years on this planet. Right. On this continent, even. <laughs> the stew of a continent we got. Yeah. <laughs> like, cut it out. I think that shows, like, the, the exposure of people, too. Like, I, I, I'm sitting here trying to think that... Um, I was talking about you the other day, too. When we was with my dad. Don't talk about me. When we was talking about my dad. So I'm like, not to be egotistical, you know, you can check it out. Check check on it. But um Google me, bitch. No, I was trying to think of any room that I was in where I never didn't necessarily feel comfortable. So I just feel like it's just the exposure that people have. Um, I just think that I'm blessed enough to bend in so many rooms that I can handle myself, but that's not everybody. I've been uncomfortable truth. in rooms. And that's the thing, like, let's not get it confused. Being uncomfortable in certain environments is not a bad thing. Being it's anxious not. is not a bad thing. And sometimes those two things get confused. Yeah. Sometimes in your head, you get butterflies and you don't know which direction they came from. Right. I've been uncomfortable, but I know how to handle myself right. in those situations. I know how not to be obvious. I know how to get acclimated to what's going on. I know what I'm looking for out of the room to acclimate myself to the room. And I know that there's not a room that exists that is not going to be somebody... That I could fuck with. Right. 
That's or what I was that say, recognizes what I was get, me. That's what I was getting. <laughs> for me, it was more about my personality. Mm-hmm. So even if um, I'm the small fish in the big pond, mm-hmm. I know how to talk the talk. I know how to understand and comprehend because it ain't even about, you know what I'm saying? The conversation. You got to understand always, to be able to carry it, understand what the fuck about is you. going on. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's not always about you. I've been saying that a lot lately to somebody, but. Cut it out. <laughs> No, because you got people got to understand that, you know, sometimes you might take something, but it's not even for you. you it just hits you, mm-hmm. but it wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just something that um, people got to, you know, just keep, keep be mindful of. Be mindful of. Um, quick question. You heard about um, Ricky Smiley's daughter? No. Fourth of July, I believe it was, but it was over the weekend. She was on her way to Whataburger in Houston, and... Got caught on a, what I believe was a crossfire. She got shot three times, had surgery, and the latest report is that she's not walking. His youngest oh, daughter. No. Um, she was away at college. Oh had, no! I'm sending prayers. That oh my goodness, that is ridiculous. If you know anything about Ricky Smiley's life story, he's been shot before. Yeah. Been a victim of gun violence before. Um, in his community, I think the neighborhood he grew up in. Um, oh. as a older guy too, not even younger. I think somebody tried to rob him if I remember the story mm-hmm. correctly. But now his daughter, who was born into privilege and doing the I right thing. I remember seeing her on the show. I think it was on the show when, um, trying to say, one of those reality shows that he they had, um, and he's behind a lot of reality shows we don't even know. But it wasn't just it wasn't even just Dish Nation. It was like some kind of other reality show where like the Brad and a few people, you saw the behind the scenes of like their life. And I believe she was, I, I know I saw her on that show. Um, I'm definitely sending my prayers because it's just just ridiculous. Um, prayers are needed. Um, one thing that I appreciate about him because he's been given play by plays from him being on air and having to tell everybody that was on the show with him because you know they're not in studio together right now. Him telling them like, "Yo, my daughter got shot last night. I'm kind of all over the place trying to figure it out." To I got to catch a plane to Dallas because the next connected flight to Houston would be seven hours. So I would have to drive from Dallas to Houston to see my daughter just to go to a hospital where he can't get in because of COVID just so that she would know he was downstairs. It's like it's deep mm-hmm. to him being out to him trying to pack and being on a thing saying how his mind's all over the place. He can't imagine losing a child, sympathizing with those people and then to him being outside the hospital. Like, he's shown the whole thing, but what I appreciate him saying is two things. He's always said, it could be worse. I'm blessed. We could, I could be going to a funeral home like a lot of other parents are right now. Mm-hmm. And he's also said, get with the people in your community that are doing things to stop gun violence and donate and help. Mm-hmm. The same shit I've been saying on this motherfucking microphone since this podcast started. Mm-hmm. Because it's important. I don't want to hear motherfuckers talk about. Oh, don't nobody say nothing until they kill us. When have you reached out to one of the organizations in right. your city that's doing something about that shit? Right. Because I talk to them people all the time, and they need resources. They have plenty. A mm-hmm. lot of them. Some of them don't. But they all need resources. It's never too many resources to try to solve a fucking problem that affects all of us. Mm-hmm. Stupid. But so anyway, bringing that to our local official. Shout out to my homie King Yada Johnson because I what? met him. Um, one of the local councilmen here, but I met him before he was even in politics um, with his organization, Peace Not Guns. I think I was one of the first people, or I think I was like one of the first people to interview him. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so shout out to him. So in regards, there's a lot of other organizations. But that's just one that I know that um, I've done work with and been a part of before. So um, definitely shout out to King Yada, all the work that he does. And everybody that's doing work, not only in Philly, but just throughout our nation and um, throughout our world, because gun violence is a global issue. It's a global problem. And, you know, put the guns down. And I'm going to um, say what we say on here all the time, just in case you ain't heard it. If you know any organizations, you know any people that need to get in contact with organizations, you know anything that's going on, hit us up. DM yeah. somebody, email somebody, comment on the YouTube. We get emails from that. Just let us know and we'll help get the word out there, point you in the right direction, connect people, figure out what the fuck makes sense that we can help you all with. Because like she always says. No one is half the battle. <laughs> you live to be a what? Oh, you know, I live to be a walking resource. Um, that's my ambition. So, like you said, if you know any information in any way that can help, it's an organization related to guns, education, enrichment. It's a lot of people out here doing positive things. Unfortunately, it's um, not 
it's, it's drowned out by the negativity that you might see in mass media. But if you know some positive information, feel free to let us know in any of our formats. On the Scene Magazine is a positive platform that's dedicated to positive information. I'm open. I'm always welcome into information so I can be a resource, so I can offer the access that our community needs. So on the Scene Magazine.com is a platform that you can certainly follow and communicate with to convey your messages and information as well. Now let me tell you something. I appreciate your spill just now for two reasons. One, I was able to finish rolling my L. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> two, you had such a rhythm going. You was rolling on that joint. I was over here dancing to the shit. <laughs> like, okay, stop. <laughs> you, you. you was DJing for a minute. Listen. You got right on your roll. You was on the winds of the two news. Because you know what? You know how I feel about that. I mean, that's my passion and purpose. And I'm not just saying that for it to sound cool. Like, I argue people down about how important positivity is. So that's one thing I can go on and on and on and on about. It's really important. It's positive. Like, where are you going to go without being positive? You need to get your money. You need to get education. That's all positive. So, And you can't really live in... I guess you can live in this world and not have to motherfucking deal with people. But um, it ain't the way to live. So at some point, you're going to want to be positive. Don't nobody like all that negative Nancy shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody with that. I just feel so Keep different when I'm surrounded by negativity. Twitch. Like I feed, I really feed off energy. So when I'm surrounded by negativity in any kind of way, or, or if I'm faced with negativity, my whole like aura, my whole vibe. When was the last changes. time you were surrounded with negativity? Uh, not too long ago, but you know. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it positive these days. Yeah, I see you your know? voice changed. That's when, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coach it. Gotcha. Listen. No, I mean we all go through it. I just wanted to fuck with you because you said it. It wasn't, it wasn't today. <laughs> you left the door open. <laughs> you left the door Not open. Today. I came on in. <laughs> but no, no. Today is love. I mean, doing this is beautiful. It's love. Even when, like lately, y'all been seeing us have to cover some heavy shit, and um, not have to. We wanted to. Yeah. Um, but it presented itself in the moments where we were doing this particular project, and. No matter what, we're always good with each other. Mm-hmm. And we've always been aware of the fuck shit. We come from the same background that we speak to all the time. Yep. Um, that taught us about our self-worth and values and taught us more than just Malcolm, M- Martin, and Harriet. Right. We, we, we learned more than that. We learned about a lot. As Listen, pups. And I'm as, honest, you about to hit me start running them down. I mean, you could go down your thing because on some real shit, I think we need to share... Require reading, that would even be if that's just people to look up yeah. or research, because we're at an internet age where, as valuable as recommending a book is, so is a name. Right. I mean, from the Shirley Chisholm's mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Phyllis Wheatley's mm-hmm. um, to Black Girls Rock. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was trying, I was trying <laughs> to keep, keep with our, our women. Um, even to no, even to the Jan Metzlingers and May Jamesons. to May, well, May Jemison mm-hmm. to. Um, Mary and Anderson, mm-hmm. um, you know, Rosa Parks is somebody that's more familiar. Madam um, CJ Walker, Madam CJ Walker, shout out. You can go to Netflix and see the some to get you know some education on some of her history right now. Um, but don't just watch the Netflix, please. No, I'm about to say, her I story said some is too good. For I was that. about to say, yeah. so, that's why no, I said I some. I know you were aware. I'm listen, just sure they know her story listen. is deeper than what you get to, you know, and that's why you have to read. And you know what? I know I sound like I know some people think I'm probably old school, but. That's why I'm not necessarily um, too keen on only digital platforms. That's why I still like to print because the information is in books. And once it goes to digital, I'm a theorist that thinks that sometimes information can get transpired incorrectly. Um, so I'm a fan of original work. That's why you got so many volumes of the Bible. Anyway. Right, right. So, no, so I'm just saying that just, I just wanted to make that note. I'm a fan of original works because sometimes, um, like Fahrenheit, for, Fahrenheit 451 is one of my favorite books. Um, and about books. So <laughs> no word. I mean, I think like like I said, this uh, this information is as important as anything. Um, the young man. Um, like I said, Combat Jackson that's running for city council. His name is Chi, by the way. He um he said that he read The Alchemist during COVID, mm. and it changed his mentality, and it it is part of what brought him to where he's at now, and what he's trying to do now. Mm. So it's like a book could change your life. It can. And a lot of people that you see in powerful positions, they've read a lot of the same books. Mm-hmm. 
Like that's one thing I realized Like when people say So what you reading now You hear successful motherfuckers Name the same shit And then somebody be like Oh I read that And they be like Alright so now he got a new one That I'm getting into now And it's this And it'll be the progression From the last one right, 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 But right. you not even up On the first one So you can't progress with them right, right, into, right. I mean in life There's levels to this In life This ain't like missing an episode mm-hmm. You know what I mean Like this is These are life lessons Um the Outliers is a book I hear about all the time. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Like, they've all read it. Mm-hmm. All of them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know who read it? All the Outliers. Right. Like, it's just the craziest shit. Like, by definition of the book, the people that's talking about it are the people they talking about. Right, 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 right So right. why wouldn't you? It was like why I said I watched The Wire. When I was living in Baltimore and Baltimore was watching The Wire, it's like, well, shit, it must be good. Right. Because if they made a show about Philly that wasn't on point, we would hate it. Right. The whole world could say it was this shit. We be in Philly like this nigga ain't said John right in five episodes. Cause can't say bull. <laughs> Why y'all got all these California motherfuckers acting like us? Like we'd have been going crazy. Right. 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 So like that's what it come down to. <laughs> I'm being honest. No, cause you always say that. You always say that about no, the shit. wire. You that always was my say gauge. That. They watched it. You when it's hood shit, that. you gotta be careful when it represents neighborhoods. Like specific, like it's not a fictional story. They really. The story ain't a hundred percent accurate, but it's a whole lot of history in that story that's being told on there. When they be running them names off, those are real names. Mm-hmm. A couple of them characters was really them bulls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The bull was one American gangster that played the deacon. Mm-hmm. He was a bull. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace to him. But like, I had friends who like my man. Shout out to my man Jamal. Like his grandma used to be like, they used to be over here for Sunday dinner. Oh wow Names they was running off On that show mm-hmm. So that's when it's different You know what I mean You you wanted And I know they can't Make it exactly like But it was close enough That them motherfuckers Watched it yeah. <laughs> And that's enough for me Yeah what, Did they ever have any shows Any good shows about Philly Like did we have any shows That we can hold that From Philly or based in Philly That we could Shows Hold mm, that Hold that to that kind of Benchmark No I well, think The wire benchmark is high well, not even, not even the. I'm just talking about um, based in Philly and and being able to maintain. I mean, prior the actual most, setting. The most Philly type shit we had was state property. Yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't even in Philly though. Exactly. <laughs> but all the language was direct. Right, 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 right. Right. It's weird. Like we don't really have nothing like that. Um, I think a lot of people have tried to make them mini series and shit, web series and such. But. But a lot of times they don't be filmed in Philly. Like, it's not an easy nut to crack. Yeah. Um, check out Concrete Soldiers, by the way, a movie that I'm in. Um, mm-hmm. Check out what they talking about, a movie that I'm in, um, that were based in Philly that show you a little bit. But, like, when you talk about shows, you mean, like, series and things yeah, that I mean, can capture the whole thing. Like, they went political, they went police, they went hood, they went the docks. They they, they covered different angles. That's and dope. That's in, on a wire that was the first time that's ever been done. Mm-hmm. So we don't have anything like that mm-hmm. where they just kept every angle. Yeah, that's what I was saying. What that we know of? If you know of something that captures yeah, it, let it us know. Because I, I would love to support you know it, I mean? especially if it's dope. I promote it with y'all right. and get y'all uh, on these platforms. Right. You got right. something? What's that? Pat said to grab that? That's what you're talking about. Uh, oh, yeah, my man. Oh, yeah, from the wire. Yep, this my guy. Yeah. Really the bull. Really based on. Yeah. Lil Melvin, really the bull. Like, and um, if you ever seen Melvin's story, started out as a gambler, way before the drug scene was what it was, and when the drug scene shifted, like if you talk to any OGs, they can tell you about when it went from you was the man if you was pimping and gambling, to you was the man if you had work, and them niggas started getting more money than the other niggas. Right. Like, they can all tell you about that. And Melvin was in there during that transition because he started out as a gambler when he was young. He got took home by the cops when he was, like, 12, 13 years old. And the cops was like, we caught your son gambling. And his mom was like, I gave him the money. He got to pay the rent. <laughs> like, Melvin was a bull. <laughs> like, a bull. Like, it ain't it ain't, it ain't, ain't nothing like. Like, That's I ain't want to get into the whole story of Melvin. Right, but right, I, right. I, I know Melvin's story. He a bull. Really a bull. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> It's crazy, like, that's why The Wire was so authentic. Like, it's just like The Sopranos or certain mob movies. If you got the right motherfuckers on set telling you 
mm-hmm. what makes sense what what builds continuity and shit like mm-hmm. that then you can't you really miss right, you can't right, fall right. so far right you know what i mean after that you need to have good writing right you gotta right. have an ill pen absolutely shout absolutely. out to lena wave absolutely. um shout out some directors man spike lee is still relevant he just dropped another banger mm-hmm. um rest in peace to john singleton ava duvernay john singleton people that capture our shit in real time the real way mm-hmm. i always want to show them love um but we about to spin up out of here me mm-hmm. and you gonna have another drink before you go though yeah um but i always want to make sure that i say because i think i forgot the last couple times that i've been on film to mention that i'm not all right and you ain't got to be all right too if you ain't okay <laughs> fuck it you ain't okay shit is fucked up everybody confused and they fucking with us. So when they ask you how you feel, when you go to work and they say, how you doing today? You stop lying. You ain't got to be evil, but you can tell a motherfucker, man, I'm a little going through it right now. But what's going on with you? How, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you got the right to do that. Because as long as you do your job, you ain't got to be the happiest motherfucker in the world. Be respectful, but don't keep lying to yourself or the people about how the fuck you feel. Because it's okay to not be okay. It always is. But right now, the whole world know why you're not okay. Mm-hmm. But um, do you think? So, you know, you can <laughs> find me on my positive platform, On The Scene Magazine. That is your place for anything from a positive perspective. We are surrounded by too much negativity. Come to On The Scene Magazine for anything you want from a positive perspective. We are going to encourage, enlighten, motivate, and enrich you. On The Scene com. Word, man. I double down on that, co-sign that, oh. split my aces, Say that. all that cool shit. But um, like I say all the time, we do this every Thursday, release this every Thursday at 4 p.m. You can also catch me on Flyboy Friday Radio on Glocker Red Radio every Friday at 4 p.m. Friday is Friday for y'all that's not initiated. That's 4 to 6 p.m. We control a happy hour, the best happy hour in the world on the greatest station in the nation, Glocker Red Radio, Flyboy the Friday G-shop. Radio. Make sure you support. <clears throat> like I said, we just redistributed the projects. Made sure that they out there in the best light possible. So check out I Swear the EP and let's talk about it. The album by let's yours truly, Sam it. Malone, sipping with Sammy Barstool Root. Whole lot of vibes for y'all. A lot of fun shit. Couple things. Um, during these times, I recommend checking out the record I got called Settle Down. Mm-hmm. I think it's perfect for right now. I think it'll work for you. But um, just make sure you fuck with us, man. Keep tuning in. Give us some feedback. Let us know who you want to see on the pod. I'm not necessarily taking suggestions, but I'm taking suggestions. Because if it's worth it, it's worth it. And the list is already long on our side. Right. But we can make um some things happen in the near future if it makes sense. So this has been another episode of Sipping with Sammy. I am Sipping with Sammy. Sam Malone, Barstool Rug. If you ain't Sipping with Sammy, you ain't Sipping right. Get your fucking life together. Ow. And we see you next week. Soft on the ad lips. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she my amigo <laughs>
That's why I tell my homies put the metal down. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Laying on the pillow, eyes wide open. Tired as hell, but can't shake my emotions. Meds don't work, need something more potent. Cause stress keeps interrupting my smoking. They say we hopeless, I know better. Say we deserve less than pets, and I know better. I show better, nah, bruh, I ain't perfect. Never did nobody harm who ain't deserve it. The time put in these verses seem my only outlet. And I ain't found my way out yet So I toss, turn on the news Country on their way to war for other dudes Same in the streets and other news Homie killed the homie from his crew Streets say he had it coming Gotta figure out something I'm getting too numb and I ain't running Seen too many dark nights That's why sometimes I leave the car park nights and settle down, settle down, settle down, settle down. They tryna tear the ghetto down. That's why I tell my homies put the metal down. And settle down, 